need in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ the Lord was tempted and suffered for us. O come, let us worship. This evening, for the first time in uh, three years, we are able to be at Christ Church Cathedral today for renewal of all the national vows, as well as to receive the oils which are used in church for anointing the sick and dying, for those who are to be baptised, and for those who are being confirmed, as well as for those who are to be ordained. This evening we receive these oils. We receive first this oil of the sick, and those in need have been blessed by our bishop for the healing of the body, mind and soul. May the sick who are anointed with it experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love. We ask this in his name. Amen. This, the oil of catechumens, has been blessed by our bishop for the anointing of those preparing for baptism. May those who are anointed with it be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms as they prepare for the saving waters of baptism. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This oil of chrism has been blessed by our bishop for the sealing of the gifts of the Spirit, given in confirmation at ordination and consecration. May all anointed with it receive the Holy Spirit, and may the splendour of holiness shine out in the world through them. In the name of Christ. Amen. Pour onto the poverty of our love and weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Amen. As you may have noticed, we are using pre-recorded music for this evening. Some of our hymns will be unaccompanied and will be led by our excellent choir, of which this is the first one. So we'll remain standing as we sing, I come with joy. I come with joy to meet my Lord, forgiven love and faith, in all wonder to recall his life played down for me. Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love, and ask him to cleanse us.
have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness, and in your great compassion blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be pure. Wash us and we shall be clean indeed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we join together in singing the Gloria. us to share in the supper which your son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes may he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love who is alive and raised with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen so let's sit for our readings From Exodus chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for the whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided into proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood 
and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we have our New Testament reading. New Testament reading is taken from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we will stand as we're able to sing according to thy gracious word, to be unaccompanied. Oh, 
Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put in his heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, that he had come to, um, from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus, asked, um, Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. If so, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God will be glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me and say to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. For this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one for another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak and may be heard in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. I always find it curious that in the Gospels that we have, we see that Jesus knows that Judas is to betray him. Which leads to kind of a, a strange quandary of a question. Did Jesus know that Judas was to betray him when he called him as a disciple? If he knowingly called him, knowing that he was to betray him, 
what does that mean to for for how we view how we are called? Then comes the question of actually what happens next. If Judas was was destined to betray Jesus, and in doing so actually allow our forgiveness of sins, has he caused a betrayal or not? And of course we know that Judas goes after um, seeing Jesus die on the cross and he himself kills himself out of guilt. What happens then? These are questions which I don't really think there are answers to, but there are things which kind of, yeah, they, they pot around my brain. And I wonder what does it all mean? Because actually through Judas's betrayal, salvation comes. Because Christ is arrested this night, because he is taken away, he is tortured, put before Pilate and the mob who are begging for his crucifixion. We have forgiveness of sins. Through Christ's death, through his resurrection, we have the chance of eternal life. And it comes down to this, and it says here in our gospel, that the devil had entered into Judas's heart. It had corrupted him. Because the devil wants us to, to, to actually not have salvation. The devil wants us to go on living in sin. And so th through corrupting of Judas, the devil thinks that he can win by killing Jesus, by proving that he is just a man. But as we know, as we see throughout the next few days, this is not the case. The devil underestimates who the Son of Man is, who the Son of God is. That through Christ's um, sacrifice, through his crucifixion, ultimate salvation and forgiveness of sins may occur. There was an interesting uh, kind of thought process that um, when it says that uh, Jesus descended to the dead for three days, the first person he went to find to rescue was Judas. Because Judas himself was betrayed and he was corrupted. But he is most in need of salvation. And what this really says to me is actually no matter how bad things are, no matter how much we have separated ourselves from God, if we are sorry, as Judas shows his sorrow and his remorse by returning the money and by then going and killing himself, he can have that forgiveness. And this is a big challenge. Because actually we see all sorts of things occur which are incredibly shocking. We see people who will harm other people. We will see people who exploit each other. We will see people who will cause harm to, um, to, 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 to all of creation. And actually, are they forgivable? And I hope that actually, if there is that repentance, that yes, they are. And that's the key element, it is repentance. There's that classic joke of the, uh, the, man, the boy who goes to his father and says, Dad, can I have a bike? Dad says, no. Boy goes and steals the bike and says, don't worry, I will ask for God for forgiveness. This is not true repentance. True repentance, he would return the bike from whence it was stolen. He would try to make amends for the inconvenience and the harm caused. And that would be true repentance. Because actually, when we come together, when we are asking for God's forgiveness, it is important we don't just say, really sorry about the God, I'm just going to do it again. We need to amend our ways. We need to change the process which we take on. Because if we go about doing things which are harmful to ourselves, harmful to others, harmful to creation, yes, we can ask for forgiveness. But if we then turn around and do exactly the same thing again, are we actually asking for forgiveness or are we asking for permission to do the wrong thing? The next few days are horrific. They really are. Tomorrow we will come together and we will remember Jesus dying on the cross. Tonight at the watch we will think about Jesus being arrested, being taken away and tortured. On Saturday we will be bereft, we will be bereft as Jesus is dead. And then when we gather at first light on Sunday, we will remember that he has been resurrected. It's quite often that we skip from one to the other. We'll come together for Monday, Thursday, and oh, last time, very nice. We'll then jump 
to Easter Day, Resurrection, Super Duper. That middle section is because we got things wrong. The torture, the execution, the whole element called through Good Friday is because we get things wrong. We should be affected by what happens. We should reflect on the sins which we commit and try to do better. I'm not saying we always do better, don't get me wrong, but actually we all muck up. We all we get things wrong, but that's a part of our nature. But every time we come here and we ask for forgiveness, we need to try a little bit harder. And hopefully when we do confess those things which we've done, we will cause harm to ourselves, to others and to the world. When we come and say, actually, you know what, I got it wrong. Hopefully we are also saying, you know what, I'm not going to do that again. And so we may do other things wrong, we may cause other problems, but we will try again. And that's the amazing thing, that's the really cool thing. Because we have salvation through Christ, we have access to that forgiveness. We are not given right, you've got three tries and then you're done. We do have the ability to try again, but we genuinely have to try again. We can't turn around and then carry on doing the exact same thing we've always been doing. But we do need to try again. So don't skip the next couple of days. Don't think morning Thursday, last supper, very nice, Easter day, chocolate, yummy. We need to remember what happens in between. We need to think about what put Christ on the cross. We need to think where we get things wrong and try to do better. It is a challenge, it is not easy. If it was easy, we wouldn't have to talk about it. We wouldn't have to be remembering what happens at Easter. But we do need to try. So it's not about listening to them, I do apologise, but actually we are entering a dark time. We're entering a time where we will be challenged and where we will struggle. But if we work together, we will try again. And through God and through his Son, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, through his death, through his resurrection, we can have access to his good graces. We can have forgiveness. And through that, we can have salvation. So now I invite all who would wish to to come and sit on the front row and so that I may wash your feet. This is quite an intimate thing, it's quite a strange thing to do. But actually it is both um, biblical because we see Christ doing it, but also recognising that my role is a servant to you all. So I would encourage many of you who would wish to to come forward and we will have the water is warm, I assure you, the towels are soft and fluffy and it is a, a if you can, a very good thing to do.
So may I invite you as you're able to please stand as we pray. Father, on this the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through their message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us. On this night, he commanded them to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and the unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded them that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us, and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us, and welcome all your children into paradise. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. And so we're going to remain standing to sing our offertory hymn, Lord Jesus Christ, which is accompanied.
Be present, be present, Lord Jesus, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. We ask this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks. It is fitting to give you glory. Father most holy through Jesus Christ our Lord. From this night he girded himself with a towel and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in this great love he gave the supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion that we may proclaim his death until he comes again, and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. We sing together. and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, and that is this holy night, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit upon your people, and gather into one into your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Our Lady, St. Thomas, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
So as our Saviour taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
So we will remain seated as we sing our post-communion hymn, We Come as Guests Invited, which is accompanied. So let, let us pray. pray. Loving God, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy in, in is complete in heaven, and we share the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Luke writes, he then left the upper room to make his way, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, with the disciples following. So as you're able, would you please stand as we sing of the glorious body telling, which is accompanied.
Mark writes, Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. A sudden fear came over him and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake.